All right, let us now look at trees in Grasshopper. We've encountered them before, and I've pulled up this script where we extruded this kind of facade-like structure. Now, just to walk through it once more, we start with a line, and then we divide that. And this is where you could see that if you put in a single value in Grasshopper, you get a solid line, and if you then get a list of values, you get this double line. So let's look at that. Open up a panel. So we took in, took one line and divided it, and so now we've got a series of T values, which we then plug into this shatter to get the individual line segments. All right? Now, we then extruded that and created a linear array. And when we created that linear array, we got a new connection type, this dashed line, which indicates that it is a tree. But what does that mean? Well, if we give any object in Grasshopper a list, it will operate on the items of that list. Now, if you connect this uh, a set of points, a list of points, to a polyline block, you will get a single polyline. But if you connect it to a block like a linear array, it will operate on every single item in that list, in this case our curves, and create a linear array of each entry in that list. So if we look at what comes out the other side, we now have a list of lists. So for every item in our original list, which we plugged into this linear array, it has created a new list with the number of um, items it was supposed to create in that array. So we've got four segments here. And for each of the four segments, we now have a separate list with three entries, each an untrimmed surface in here. All right? So actually, I'll connect it here to the extrude so that you can see we put in these four untrimmed surfaces, and now we've got this structure, which has got four entries in it with three untrimmed surfaces in each of it. So we've got this list of lists. Now, if we now take this list of lists and do a deep rep and look at the four corner points of every single one of these surfaces, you can see that the same thing goes on. So now what we've got is one list for every four corner points. And if you look at these, um, these indices at the top, you see that something has changed. So right now we've got four entries and this, you know, kind of seems intuitive at the end. If you ignore the, the first three zeros because they all stay the same, the, the address of each of these lists goes zero, one, two, three. So it's kind of like we had, you know, if we want to access something in a list, we give it the index. Well, now we've got a list of lists. So every list needs to have an index as well. Now you can see that the two last numbers are changing because now we've actually got a list of lists of lists because for each of these three untrimmed surfaces, we've now got the four points. And you can probably tell by now that talking of lists of lists of lists gets a little bit confusing at some stage. So the, meta, uh, the metaphor for this in Grasshopper is a tree. And that will become obvious as soon as we take a look at the param viewer item block. Here we go. So let's plug in this output of this linear array in here. You can see that it says, OK, I've got four branches. And each of these branches has got three items in it. So instead of talking of a list of lists, we're talking about a tree. And this tree has got four branches. And on each of these branches, so on the leaf, the leaf in this case is a list, we've got three items. And we can actually go right click on the param viewer and say draw tree. And then we'll get this graphical representation. So you can see we've got four branches, one for each of these surfaces. And then this orange thing is the list at the end of that tree. Now, if we connect the same block to our, our points, we see that 
Okay, now we've got a tree with 12 branches, and each of them has got four points in it at the end in its list. But if we draw the tree, you can see that it's got this hierarchy. So the hierarchy we, which, hierarchy which we expect here, so we've got, first of all, we've got our individual surfaces, then we've got, let's say, our stories, and within each of these stories, we then have uh, the panels, which have then got the four points. Well, that's reflected here. All right, so we've got four columns. So each of those columns is a branch. And then on those columns, we've got three rows, so these three stories, and each of those is a branch. And then at the end of that, we've got the lists with the four points in it. Now, the reason why there's these two, let's say, trunks of the tree behind each other is that Grasshopper works very cleanly. So each time it does certain operations, it'll add another layer to that tree. And you can see that here if we go to the beginning of our program, if we begin with this divide, you can see that here we've already introduced a new layer to that tree. Right? So in the beginning we had a list with, uh, which was a, it was simply a list. There was no further levels here. But as soon as we did this, it added another level. Now each of these levels still only had one entry, right? There's only one branch behind each other. If you look at the power and viewer for this and draw the tree, you can see that it's a straight line all the way to the list. So there's only one tree trunk. But as soon as we continue, we continue adding layers, even though it might not cause the tree to branch, it adds this another tree trunk level, just to keep things tidy and logical within itself. All right, we can actually remove these unnecessary tree trunks if we like. It might be useful at certain stages. You can simply right click and then go simplify. And then you can see that tree trunk disappears and we've only got the pertinent branches. And all of these commands which we're going to talk about, including the simplify, are available. Where is it here? Sets. There we go. Under the tree menu. You can see simplify tree. It's actually got this nice little icon where you can obviously see that it's going to delete the the trunk of that tree. All right, so that just to understand trees. So far, whenever we've encountered a tree, we've usually told you to flatten it. So to get rid of the tree and turn it back into a list. So what does that mean? And I've prepared a little something here, and this might Seem familiar if you've ever looked at the book Algorithm Aided Design by Arturo Tedeschi. I've taken a few of the examples from that book as inspiration for these tutorials. So what I have here is a linear array of triangular surfaces. Now if I deconstruct these and then look at the points so I'm going to take these points and put them in a separate object just so that we can look only at the points. All right? So now we've got these points. And if we look at it in a panel, you can see already by the dashed line that this is a tree. So for each triangle, there's a separate list. So each triangle is on a separate branch. Now, if we connect these with a polyline, what will happen is that it'll operate on every list separately. So if we plug this in, you can see that it draws a polyline between those three points for every one of these lists. So we've got a tree, and each branch is one triangle, and at the end of that branch is a list with the points in it. And so what Grasshopper does is it executes this block on every single branch and not over all of the items in one go. Now, if we wanted to have that, so let's say we want to have a line going through all of these points, we simply have to flatten the tree. So I'm actually going to connect a param viewer as well so that we can look at both at the same time. There we go, got our tree. Now, what happens when I 
right click and go flatten is that all those branches disappear it gets turned into a single flat list and then that means that the polyline goes through all of the points and once again this command is also available here in the where is it there flatten tree nice little tree stump okay now an example where we had to use flatten was when we were splitting a surface right so I've got this barrel like surface here and was created with a sweep we've divided two of the uh, defining lines the rail and the section curve and use these to create the UV coordinates to create the lines with which we want to split this surface now if you look at the output of this line you can see that I've already flattened it and what happens when I unflatten it so let's remove this and remove this and you can see that now instead of having a list of curves with which we want to split this we've got uh, a set of branches and each of these branches has got a list with only one entry at its end and what that means is that this surface split block splits the original surface once with this curve once with that curve once with that curve instead of using all the curves at the same time and this becomes very obviously obvious as soon as you bake it because now you can see that it's done one split there and it's done another split along another line right so maybe that is something that you want to do at some stage and we'll talk about that in the next video but in this case we obviously don't want to do it because we don't want to have a split operation for every single curve separately we want to have them all together so what we do is we flatten both of these trees so that we've got two lists we merge them into this command and then what happens is that it actually does a single split operation using all of these lines and creates the 100 surfaces that we would expect if we use a divide with a count of 10 in both directions all right so we've talked a little bit in detail what a tree is so it's a list of lists of lists um, grasshopper will the grasshopper blocks will work on the lists passed to it so the entries of the list are what's critical so if you want to have the block operate separately you give it a bunch of branches each with its own list at the end but if you want to combine everything at the end of that you need to flatten the tree so that you get a single list so that it um, uses all the data in one go and not in separate instances. Alright, thank you for watching.